Hi, this is Marina Wilhelm again, and you have just clicked on a video on my channel. Uh, so I'm trying to look for a good story about New London, Connecticut, and mostly what I came up with was um, what to do. So it took a little bit of surfing on the internet. Um, and I came upon a website I've never seen before. The name of it is Connecticut Explored, formerly known as Hog River Journal. I've never heard of it. Um, but I started to read um, a little uh, description of it um, in my search engine. And it looked really cool, so I want to read it too. I'm sorry if you can see my reflection in my glasses, but I need this to read. Okay, I guess I'll just give you another angle. Um, so the New London Ghost Ship and Oval Office. Now they have um, a different line. It says Maritime History State Historian. So I don't know if that means the next person has that title, but I know that this is authored by Walter Woodward. Um, they have a picture of a Resolute desk. Um, the photo, they think, was taken between 1905 and 1945. Um, it is the Harris and Ewing Library of Congress. Okay. Um, so I just give you the full credit. I'm not trying to plagiarize or anything like that. Um, I just want to read you the story and... Uh, if you find it fascinating, um, I'm going to try to provide you with a link to click on. Um, so, this was, I'm assuming this was written in 2022. Um, they would like me to subscribe or buy the issue. There's a lot of content on the site. Um, so, I'm just going to read this to you as best as I can. Um, looks like it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight, seven or eight paragraphs long, depending on what you count as a paragraph. Um, all right, so here it goes. Um, how many know about Connecticut's connection to the president's desk in the Oval Office and the preservation and craftsmanship stories it embodies? The story begins when Captain James Buddington of Groton and a skeleton crew of 11 sailed into New London Harbor on Christmas Eve, 1855. Um, the prize vessel, the veteran whaler, had discovered abandoned on an ice floe off Bafflin Island three months before was none other than battered Arctic rescue ship HMS Resolute. Resolute had been sent by the British Admiralty in 1852 to search for the missing explorer Sir John Franklin, whose entire expedition had disappeared while attempting to find the Northwest Passage linking the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans in 1845. The Iron Proud Resolute, specifically fitted to withstand the crushing demands of Arctic conditions, had been the lead ship of a five-vessel rescue mission. While it had not found any sign of Franklin, the ship had rescued the crew, the icebound HMS investigator in April 1853. Um, unfortunately, four months later, the Resolute 2 became locked into a moving ice flow through a brutal arctic winter eight months later the captain and crew reluctantly abandoned resolute for a grueling over ice march to safety leaving the ship to drift buddington and his new crew found the ghost ship on september 10th 
1855, 1,200 miles from where she had been abandoned. Buddington's voyage in search of whales had so far had limited success. But by the laws of salvage, the Resolute was now his. If he could get it home. Resolute was designed for a crew of 75 men. Buddington's crew numbered 26. Resolute was damaged, waterlogged, and in need of rigging and sails. The challenge was formidable. The subsequent 67-day tempest-tossed journey to New London was, according to Martin W. Sandler in Resolute, the most difficult of Buddington's long career. Quote, unquote, I did not know how I did it, Buddington later recalled. Recalled. Resolute's arrival in New London was a major event. As Sandler documents, the ghost ship provoked both local curiosity and international diplomacy. She attracts visitors from everywhere, the Boston Daily Advertiser observed. The British government immediately asserted ownership of the vessel. It dropped its claim, though, at the urging of Henry Grinnell, an American philanthropist who had personally funded two expeditions to find Franklin and who noted that Bunnington had suffered great financial losses rescuing the vessel. Grinnell then asked the U.S. Congress to buy the Resolute from Buddington, restore it, and return it to Britain in recognition of its humane and merciful object of rescuing the Franklin expedition. Congress authorized the funding, and on December 12, 1856, The Resolute reached Portsmouth, England, where she was visited by Queen Victoria. The Resolute returned to service and sailed until 1879. Upon its retirement, Queen Victoria ordered special desks to be made from Resolute's timbers, one of which was presented as a gift to the President of the United States. The elaborately carved desk arrived at the White House on November 23, 1880. That's a lot of history that I can't talk about. Um, There it was received by President Rutherford B. Hayes. The Resolute Desk became a presidential workstation and site of visitor interest because of its beautiful design and historical significance. It was moved into the Oval Office by John F. Kennedy in 1961 and has been used there by every president since except George H.W. Bush. Okay, Um, so at the end of the story, it says that the author, Walter W. Woodward, is the Connecticut State Historian. You can listen to his podcast at gradingthenutmeg.libson.com and visit todaynchistory.com. So I will leave the link for you um, to this reading um, just in case this was a little too fast. I know it was only nine minutes. I thought it would be a little bit longer. Um, There isn't much else I can say about it. Um, I think it's interesting that uh, they were trying to sail on a holiday. Christmas Eve. It's kind of sad. Um, Okay. Well, I will let you re-listen if you'd like to do that. Um, if you're interested in 
more videos like this um make sure you post a comment or um just hit subscribe post a comment um like the video and i will try to get you more content like this thank you for listening